a reading from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And so Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age, who was said to be barren, has also conceived. And this is the sixth month for her. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. When I was uh, younger growing up, one of my favorite things to do was to uh, play with blocks and to build. And what I loved building the most was basically any kind of tower I thought I could. I wanted to build as high and as tall as I possibly could. For a long time, I had uh, Legos as a kid and I'd build all these skyscrapers. But even before that, I would just have, you know, your basic building blocks. And I learned from a pretty young age that if I wanted to build a tower as high as I possibly could, a tower that used every single block I owned, I had to start with a strong foundation. I had to start with a big, wide base and be very careful about how I stacked things, keeping everything neat. And depending on how well I did on those first few levels, that would determine how high I could go. I learned that very quickly through trial and error, of course, and... I think it's just a, a pretty fundamental thing to figure out about when you're building something, those first steps matter so much. They set the tone, they set the scene, they, they put so many things in motion that you can't fix later down the line. It's important to have a strong foundation. And that's, I think, what we get to hear here in this story. We get to see and hear the foundation of the story that God is building here on earth. God is getting ready to do something that has never been done before. God is breaking that divider between heaven and earth. God is coming down and being a part in, with, and of humanity. And to do something like that, it's going to take a strong foundation. It's going to take a sturdy and a stable and a powerful base to make a story like that take off. If we're going to make it to the heights of Easter Sunday, we have to start out our Christmas with a strong foundation. Now, the foundation that God picks isn't, I think, what most of us would imagine when we think of something strong and sure and sturdy. You see, God picks a teenager, maybe 14 or 15 years old, an unmarried young woman in Palestine as God's foundation for this story. We might imagine that a foundation would look more like uh, an army or a mountain or some big unmovable force, but God picks a young girl a young girl in 
a particular moment in her life when she finds out that she's going to have a baby. I don't know about you, but that doesn't necessarily inspire confidence and stability in my mind. I know in the times in my life when my family, when my wife and I have been in those kinds of situations, those first couple of weeks where we wonder if a child might be coming, we wonder if a baby might be on the way, those weeks don't feel especially stable in my life. The emotions that swirl around them are all over the map. There's fear and uncertainty, wondering whether we're ready. There's all of this hope and anticipation and possibilities of what might be. And at the same time, it all feels so tenuous. It feels like we can't even name what's happening because if we give a name to it, that it might not happen, that it feels that tenuous, that that possibility might just slip through our fingers if we aren't careful with it. These moments that happen in our lives, those moments when we're wondering if new life is going to come, those moments when we might be expecting a child, those moments when we wonder if we might be pregnant, they have such power over us. In those moments, we experience the whole spectrum of emotion that is possible. There's fear and uncertainty. There's the wondering whether we're ready. There's the knowing we're not ready. There's all of this hope and yet just not knowing if things are going to turn out the way we want. There's also grief. Knowing that things don't always go the right way. Knowing that those moments can be gut-wrenching when they don't end with a child. There's grief knowing that we might not even get to that moment in the first place. This moment right at the beginning of life, those moments right when that new possibility is just beginning to erupt, those moments are crazy. They take us and they fling our emotions every which way. They come upon us in different points in our lives. They touch each of us in different ways. It feels like maybe the most chaotic moment in our lives. And it's that moment. It's that moment that God uses as the foundation for this story. That moment of discovering a child might be coming for a young teenage woman in Palestine is the foundation upon which God will build the greatest story ever told. If we were gathered together in person in a time when we could be in the same building at the same time, it would probably be right around this week that we would be sharing with you our kids' Christmas program. Call it Good News of Great Joy. It's when our children tell us the message for the day. They tell us the story that God told us 2,000 years ago. We'd have kids dressed up as Mary and Joseph and wise men and shepherds and everything in between. And usually what I say at the very beginning to introduce that story is that what we're about to hear is a story God told us 2,000 years ago. But if you listen carefully, we find out that this story isn't just something that happened thousands of years ago, thousands of miles away. But this story is happening right here and right now. God shows up in Jesus, yes, 2,000 years ago in Palestine, but Jesus keeps showing up in the world in unexpected places in unexpected ways. Christmas keeps happening in our lives and in our families and in our communities. And this year, Christmas is happening again. God is still showing up. God is still building new foundations in the unlikeliest of places. God is coming into this world. Wherever you may be this Christmas season, however you plan to gather or 
to find a way to connect with those around you and still stay safe. I hope that you have a chance to look around, to see what God is doing in this moment right here and right now, to see the ways God is showing up in our lives, to see the ways God is reaching out even to us to build a strong foundation for the story that God is telling right here and right now, for all that God is about to do in this place. This Christmas season, know that God is here, that God is coming into this world, and that nothing can stop the new life that God brings to us. May we each find a way to be that strong foundation that God is calling for. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Amen.